Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Ronnie Bikramdas. I'll be presenting uh, on behalf of my co-authors, uh, Professor Prakash Prasad, Dr. Kelvin Walton Jr. and Mr. Iran Amrali. Our project is the evaluation of a cricket bowling machine with an arm and hand to deliver the ball. In cricket, batsmen track the ball as it's been delivered out of the bowler's hand to determine where it pitches, the bounce after a pitch, which is basically the line and length of the delivery. With traditional bowling machines, the ball is shot out of the machine via means of rotating wheel or pneumatic system. Because of this, batsmen tend to find it a bit difficult to trace the ball that is being shot out of the machine. Hence, their response to change to, is to change their batting stance, which leads to early bat swing, which leads to early down swing, also shorter stride towards the ball, which makes it a bit difficult to play the ball properly. Thus, it was concluded that the bowling arm and hand is the main visual cue for highly skilled batsmen. The most popular bowling machines are the wheel type machines or rotating wheel machines, such as the single wheel, the two wheel machines and the three wheel machines. The two and three wheel machines are the more popular wheel machines used in um, cricket of the modern time. Uh, it gives more realistic spin and swing. Uh, because of the uh, problems or deficiencies on the machine that was outlined, the robotic bowl, bowling arm prototype was developed at the University of Western East by Mr. Neil Ramdas under the supervision of Professor Prakash Prasad. So the work was done and research, and then an anthropometric fast bowling machine with an arm was developed at the University of Trinidad and Tobago by Dr. Kelvin Lawton Jr. and supervised by Professor Prakash Prasad. Yeah, you can see a picture of the machine, the said machine, which is used for this testing and evaluation. The objective of this um, project is to test the usability, functionality, repeatability, and accuracy of the bowling machine. Also to collect and analyze data using the pitch vision technology and cameras. Also to identify any shortcomings of the bowling machine after testing. The testing was done in two phases. Phase one, testing of the bowling machine using the pitch vision system or software. Uh, the in that uh, testing, we had variation of wrist angles, as you see there, and we had variation in plate separation. The plate separation corresponds to the extension of the spring, which in turn is the speed of the delivery. In the second phase of testing, testing with batsmen, where the batsmen actually face the machine and give their reviews. In this case, we had uh, the wrist angles kept constant at zero degrees and the plate separation varied from us. 600 millimeters to 800 millimeters, which corresponds to a speed of 60 to 85 miles per hour. To validate this, um, the experimental data, a model was derived using projectile motion to determine the length or the distance the ball uh, pitches after leaving the um, bowler's hand. Some conditions were taken into consideration. Uh, the, the velocity or the speed of the deliveries was kept at 80 miles per hour. Also, an assumption was made that the ball was launched at 90 degrees normal to the hand, as seen in the diagram. Here we see the model that was derived, uh, showing, um, given the distance that uh, would be calculated when the ball leaves the hand and hit his, hits the pitch. Uh, this uh, table shows the calculated value from that model equation. Here we can see in the first column the, various, the variation in wrist angle, and then the distance from the bowler to the, where the ball is pitched is calculated, also the distance from where the ball pitches to the, um, the stumps at the striker's end was calculated. This is because the data from the pitch vision gives that value. Now we can see some results that was taken from pitch vision. This table shows the data collected with varying wrist angles and uh, plate separation kept constant at 780 millimeters or actually 80 miles per hour. Here you can see for each uh, setting or each wrist angle, six deliveries was bold, which is an over, 
and the length of the delivery were um, recorded, as well as the type of delivery, whether it be a short delivery, a full delivery, a good length delivery, as the case may be. Here we have some uh, data collected again. In this case, this table shows uh, a constant wrist angle and a variation in plate separation or uh, speed of the delivery. Again, six deliveries of bowl, one over per setting. And the length of the deliveries were um, recorded, as well as the type of delivery. This um, picture here shows you a pitch map of the data collected for the first 10 overs, each over shown in a different color. Now, just to discuss some of the data that was collected, uh, this table shows uh, the comparison of the experimental data and the calculated data. We have the wrist angles, various wrist angles. The plate separation was kept constant at uh, 80 miles per hour. And then you have the average value or average experimental value. I said, uh, we say average experimental value because six values were collected for each over, over. So we had to find the average to get one for comparison. In comparing the data, we can see at zero degrees wrist angle, there was an error of 2.2%. At 2.5, there was an error of 9.7%. And at 5 degrees, there was an error of 14.6%. Hence, it shows that as you increase, as you move forward or backward from that zero palm position or zero degrees position, the error increases. Again, just discussing some of the data, as you can see, in the second and third over, that's the orange and the green dots that you see here on the pitch map, uh, it shows a variation in length of 0.4. And that variation means the distance between the two furthest deliveries in that over. In the eight over, we can see a variation in length of 0.5 meters, as in the blue dots here. In the 10 over, we can see a variation of 0.6 meters, as we see in the white circle. This corresponds to um, deliveries in each over being in and around that one meter mark. This makes the bowling machine very accurate and repeatable. Uh, just a discussion, discussion again to compare a data study that was done by Anish Kulkarni in uh, 2010. He um, tried to determine how often bowlers, fast bowlers, that is, bowl in the corridor just outside at Ofstam. His data was taken from T20 internationals in 2009. His results showed that 73% of the deliveries were bowled in that channel outside at Ofstam. Um, data collected from Pitch Vision showed that our machine actually bowled 92.3% of the deliveries in that off stump, just outside that off stump line as seen in the picture there. So from that uh, the analysis that was done, some recommendations was made, uh, a different method of activation, such as the uh, using motors instead of spring activation. We designed of a more efficient braking system. That is the system that used to stop the arm to deliver the ball. Uh, redesign of the hand with fingers and wrist movement to get more variation in terms of spin and swing. We design of a leg, design of the leg, I should say, and our damping system to stabilize the machine. Uh, motorize the wheel or redesign the wheel system, make it ease of movement. It's a heavy machine, so make it easier to use wheels. Also, the, to use lightweight composite material um, for frame and other parts. In conclusion, the testing with the batsman proved that the bowling machine allowed the batsman to set up or perform their trigger movement as they would in a real match. The batsman were able to follow the ball and track the ball from the hand of the machine all the way to the bat as they would in facing an actual bowler. The bowling machine would be able to bowl any length with, vari with various combination of wrist angle and plate separation. The bowling machine was found to be usable, functional, repeatable, and definitely accurate. The bowling machine would be a great equipment to assist coaches in their quest to produce the best cricketers. The bowling machine can be used for training, such as working on specific skills and technique, as well as game situation to make it more realistic for the batsman. Uh, the, these are the references that was used for this research. Uh, thank you very much, and any questions are welcome. Thank you, uh, Mr. Brickram Das. Um, well done. Um, are there any questions? Yes, there are. 
Um, there's a question from Dr. Ellis. What's the sample size that's used to give the 93% accuracy? A uh, sample size is used uh, at uh, 13 overs. Okay, so 78. Yes, correct. All right. And what environmental conditions, under what environmental conditions did you test the machine? Oh, it was indoors. Um, mm -hmm. The calculation was done for indoor testing. With, we eliminated uh, air resistance and all that. If we took uh, air resistance and all those other environmental factors into consideration, the model would be a bit more complicated and difficult to use. So it was done, the testing was done indoors, also because of the pit vision system that we used, it had to be done indoors. Um, Chair, if I may. Mm -hmm. Dr. Birch? Yeah. Yes. Um, just to continue along that line. So do you think the environmental conditions, if you, well, apply them to the entire system, do you think that the accuracy would remain the same? Um, definitely, it would remain the same. All we have to do is tweak the system to compensate for those uh, conditions. So remember, as it is right now, the system um, was designed actually for those conditions. We tweak the system a bit to use it for the indoor testing because of the facility and uh, the, the pitch vision software or system that we had. But yes, the system could be tweaked uh, for, well, actually was designed for those conditions and those environment or using outdoor conditions, and it would be as accurate as it is currently. Uh, the um, reason why I'm asking, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. go ahead. No, the reason why I'm asking is that in cricket, yes. environmental conditions change as clouds move, as wind blows, as moisture erupts. So if you're testing <laughs> accuracy, it's it's difficult to just have something under one condition sure. and, and claim accuracy when you're comparing it, especially you compared it to some T20 matches, which were done outdoors. Doors, so you're not yes. testing the same thing under the same conditions. So I, I think the comparison is um, unfair. Okay, fair enough. Um, but remember, the, the machine is designed for those conditions as well. Um, yes, it wasn't tested under those conditions uh, because of the system that we use for the testing. But um, yes, it could be done um, testing uh, outside on all outdoor conditions. And not only that, um, the proposal is to automate the machine or use AI technology in the machine so it can compensate for those various uh, uh, conditions. So as you mentioned, yes, uh, you may have a, a gas wind that may change the condition from delivery to delivery. So we will be able to compensate for all those uh, conditions. All right, there's another question. Um, as the wrist angle was increased, the error increased. What yes. caused that and how can it be resolved? Okay, the, the reason for that is that the, the fact that in moving the wrist angle, it's either back of the, um, the zero degrees or forward, in the sense that the release point of the ball would change. And when the release point change, uh, the way we have the hand set up is that the, the finger, the, the hand, the ball is just rest in the hand. It's not grip, so there's no um, way we can determine exactly when the ball is released. Remember, we also set up the breaking system to uh, release the ball or to stop the arm at the particular angle that we want to release the ball. So in that, because of the, the fact that the hand is not repeatable, I would say, uh, it would be released at probably um, a degree, uh, between um, a degree or so off, or rather before or after. So it wouldn't be released accurately at that, um, let's say, 2.5 degrees or 5 degrees angle. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. It's an interesting topic for a pastime that is well <laughs> Well, it is. <laughs> yes, if I may add, it is required right now at the um, WICB. They, I had some people at the uh, West Indies Cricket Board. Um, they look at the machine and they were very interested in the fact that they, they said this is what we, it was required to really enhance the batsman technique in the Caribbean. Not only that's the Caribbean, but the world. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Brickram Das.